Uh, two years ago, we sat in this room in front of maybe some of you where, where we gave an update on an initiative that launched in 2002, 2012 on the African Strategic Infrastructure Initiative. I'd like to thank you for all joining to hear the update on this. It's at the end of a three-year period. I know we have many, uh, many people online that are viewing this as well, so welcome and we thank you for your interest. Uh, this press conference is to give you an update on what we've now done. Uh, two years ago, we made a commitment as a group of leaders um, that we would work together, public-private cooperation, to help accelerate infrastructure implementation in Africa. And I'm very pleased that in today's press conference, we have a very distinguished set of uh, guests and panelists who will share what we've done since then. Uh, in, a, in a nutshell, we've been able to move forward with one of the PETA projects, the Program for Infrastructure Development of Africa projects in the Central Corridor, to really try to uh, and, and advance and accelerate progress on that. Secondly, we've completed a final, uh, a third part of a knowledge series report uh, related to helping uh, provide more guidance in terms of knowledge uh, and practical implementation. Uh, the report that's been released uh, at Cape Town is a special report on project preparation. And finally, we are here to celebrate the transition of the World Economic Forum role to the rightful leaders in Africa, including uh, the NEPAD agency. So with that very brief introduction, I'm, I'm pleased to pass on to uh, my left, uh, former Prime Minister Gordon Brown, who's been serving as the chair of our global World Economic Forum and Global Strategic <coughs> Infrastructure Initiative and has been very much leading the process over the last three years. Africa, as I think people know here, has a $100 billion a year infrastructure gap. In other words, we need to spend $1.5 trillion on infrastructure in the next 15 years. If we're to provide the electricity, only a third of Africans have electricity, provide the water and sanitation, provide the roads and rail that are necessary for economic growth, uh, and provide the jobs uh, necessary for 80 million uh, young people uh, in Africa to get jobs every year. Uh, and so if Africa could solve its infrastructure problem uh, and secure the investment that's necessary, the growth rate of Africa could approach that of China and India. That is the prize that is available to Africa if we can deliver better infrastructure. So as Alec has said, for the last two years, we have been working uh, with uh, African leaders uh, on creating a, a bank of infrastructure projects that need to be done, working out how they could be done, working out what are the priorities in doing them, uh, and bringing to fruition a number of uh, projects, including what Alec has just mentioned, the Central Corridor Project, which links five countries around Tanzania, including Tanzania, uh, and has been supported by all the political leaders of these uh, countries, uh, who are meeting regularly to move the process forward. Uh, and now we're at the stage where projects within the uh, Central Corridor, uh, which is a, a road, rail, and port project, uh, are nearing uh, fruition. So four have already become bankable, others are on the point of becoming bankable, uh, and many others are either public sector projects that will be done when the finance is available or are public-private partnerships in the main uh, which can deliver results. And the lessons that we are learning is that there is political will in Africa to move and solve the infrastructure gap, that there is coordination taking place amongst the leaders of Africa particularly with the support this morning and over the last three years of President uh, Zuma, who has got a personal interest in moving infrastructure development uh, forward. There is an emphasis on delivery and getting things uh, done, uh, and this has been the success over only a few months of bringing the Tanzania project uh, uh, together. And now we are sending a message out to the rest of the world that Africa is ready with projects that can be financed by international investors uh, if they are interested uh, in seeing uh, the benefits that can flow from investing in Africa. So we are at the start, I believe, of uh, an investment decade uh, that will solve uh, the infrastructure gap, that will give hope to Africans that uh, if they do not have electricity, and 600 million don't have it now, uh, that uh, electricity can uh, be extended. Uh, if they don't have water and sanitation, that this will be done and at the same time that the roads and the rails that are necessary for internal uh, trade as well as uh, trade from inside Africa to the rest of the world uh, are going to be built uh, to deliver the infrastructure we need. Now, infrastructure itself may sound like a technical or sometimes a boring word, but it is the social and economic fabric that is essential to improve the quality of lives of the people of Africa. 
and the combination of investment in infrastructure and investment in education uh, are going to make Africa one of the leading economies of the world in the future. Thank you. A key to the entire model we've been speaking about is bringing together a collection of business leaders together with government leaders and experts. And fundamental to what we've done is created what we call a business working group that consisted of over 40 organizations. I'm pleased to then invite Sim Shabalala, who's the Joint Chief Executive Officer of the Standard Bank Group. He has been one of the uh, anchors of the business working group to invite him to share some comments. Just a couple of comments. I think it's very, very important for uh, Africa to successfully address the infrastructure deficit for there to be uh, as much coordination and cooperation and trust as is reasonably practicable between the official sector, government, uh, DFIs, developers, uh, financial institutions, and organs of civil society. And so when one sees the Central Corridor Presidential Roundtable uh, meeting on a quarterly basis, you're seeing the leadership required from the official sector and from governments who have the mandate, uh, and that is a good signal, I think, to business and financiers. You're also seeing the Central Corridor Transit Facilitation Agency, which is the institutional capacity necessary to execute the projects. That is meeting on a regular basis and is executing. And as has been pointed out, you're seeing the business working group making a contribution to the discussions so as to make the projects that are being discussed bankable. There are many topics that one could cover, but as a financier, the one element I would just like to speak about is the importance of early stage pro project financing. Um, and, the and the facilities that are available to give effect to, to that. Uh, the Boston Consulting Group, as well as the World Economic Forum, have produced a paper that sets out some of the principles underpinning, underpinning this. But for me, here are important principles. First of all, you need developers that have sufficient equity to be able to execute on the early stage of projects. So they need the equity and the capability to be able to do this. To the extent that you need money from government and the official sector, governments can either recover this money from, uh, through tariffs and or through making bidders pay for this uh, and let the bidders uh, recover their funds through, through the transactions. But importantly, there is uh, funding from DFIs, uh, from governments, from the World Bank, which needs to be uh, mobilized for the purposes of, the, of these early stages uh, of projects. The importance uh, of what is happening here, though, is the ability of uh, the central corridor and the institution set up to execute against that, uh, that opportunity to mobilize and coordinate the, the raising uh, of, of those funds. It's truly a historic moment, and we're immensely excited to, uh, to, to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Sim. I'm pleased now to also call on another member of our business working group, but also as a chair. So we had two chairs, uh, the Development Bank of South Africa and General Electric, who chaired the business working group. And in this regard, it's very pleased that we have Patrick Delamy, who's the CEO and managing director of the DBSA here. And he's been an, actually a very key stalwart um, pillar of the work as well, as, including the work at the Central Corridor. Thank you, Alex. Uh, really, it is a moment of <coughs> excitement indeed, because if we were to look at when we identified the Central Corridor as the most impactful and transformative project of all the 51 PIDA projects, we then took nine months. This actually involved workshops after workshops where we were discussing information as the teams were collating this information from the various countries. But the best thing was the political leadership that we saw in the five central corridor countries, where they set that coordinating agency to say then each country will then make sure that the, all their agencies coordinate and contribute and forward information to, that, to the coordinating agent, the CCTTFA, that then we were able to collate the data and package this data and then analyze and putting our money into, in, into preparing, the preparation, preparing, pre preparing these projects so that they are ready for presentation to the presidential roundtable on the 25th of March this year, where the president from the five central corridor countries were present 
And on the 26th, we then were able to present those projects, the 23, 23 projects that were presented to the investor community. We had over 200 investors in Dar es Salaam in Jurassic Nyele Con Convention Center. And I'm quite excited because in the manner that we presented those projects, we presented projects that were ready for, invest in, for investors. We presented projects that still required further project preparation and projects actually that we still then need to put together and drive further. But what then we are now doing is the NEPAD agency will now be able actually to work with the CCTTFA of the Central Corridor to then ensure that all these projects are all actually brought into bankability and are all then actually brought into execution. But the leadership that has been played by the World Economic Forum in really bringing together all the various parties, it was a classical public-private partnership situation that we saw delivering such a massive project in a very short space of time, which then says, going forward, <coughs> the other 51, the other 50 PIDA projects, we then can be able to really replicate the same model and framework to drive those projects into bankability, wherein we can get the investors to participate. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, a core government partner or intergovernmental partner that we've had throughout the whole process, of course, has been uh, the NEPAD agency, the African Development Bank, <coughs> the African Union Commission. And in this regard, as mentioned by Patrick, we're very pleased that with the uh, kickoff that we've uh, lent, we're now very pleased and honored that we can hand over the mandate of the Secretariat in terms of accelerating the other 50 projects to the NEPAD agency. Uh, the World Economic Forum will remain committed to supporting infrastructure development in Africa with some uh, future work and including supporting Dr. Miyake. But may I please call on Dr. Ibrahim Miyake, who's the CEO of NEPAD Agency, to make some comments. Thank you, Alex. Uh, uh, I would like to say three, three quick things. Uh, the first one, Africa did put its house in order in what relates to infrastructure development by designing PIDA. But we didn't have a governance model in the implementation of regional infrastructure projects. And this is uh, uh, why that partnership with the World Economic Forum, which governed the business working group with uh, the DFIs and the private sector, did allow us to frame a governance model. So now we have a governance model for regional infrastructure implementation. And once we have this model, we can accelerate implementation, go to bankability, and go beyond bankability to issues related to maintenance operations and so on. So the emergence of that governance model is a key achievement of the business working group. And as Prime Minister Brown was saying, we are at the verge of that investment decade, and that governance model will play a critical role in that investment decade. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Miyake. I think we'll take time for two or three questions maximum, if there are any. Please, go ahead. Alma Price, The Bricks Post. In terms of timelines, actual uh, people on the ground, when are you expecting the Central Corridor to put down its first rail, build its first bridge, et cetera? Great. Let me take if there's another question or two, and then we'll answer them all. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's Mzwane Limbeji from SAPC. Um, the, some of the disturbances that we sometimes see on the continent, um, you know, I think currently it would be a country like Burundi and, uh, well, some pockets of disturbances, how much do they impact on some of those uh, projects that you intend uh, doing? And uh, is the political will sufficient for you to be able to say you're ready uh, to get going? Very good. Okay. One more question, please. Very good. 
A very good morning to the panelists. Uh, very good morning, Prime Minister Brown. My name is Stuart Lisulo, uh, business reporter for the Post newspapers based in Lusaka, Zambia. A very quick question. Um, I come from a country where the government in the last two to three years has gone to the capital markets to finance infrastructure development. Both in 2012 and 2014, they issued, there was a, su a successful issuance of a sovereign euro bond for $750 million and $1 billion in 2014. The question I wanted to ask Mr. Brown, Prime Minister Brown is, is it sustainable to um, contract debt to finance uh, infrastructure development on the massive scale which the Zambian government is planning to do? <clears throat> Great. So I think let's answer those three questions. Again, the first one was a little more detail on the timeline on Central Corridor. The second was how do we deal with political uh, uh, risks that will inevitably occur in any uh, region of the world. And finally, a question specifically on the capital markets and the financing. Um, Mr. Brown, Prime Minister Brown, perhaps you can well, take the first answer. Well, in, in a way, the, um, the Central Corridor is already starting. These are projects that are now underway. Uh, I said that four had already been uh, financed other uh, four on the point of being financed uh, out of uh, more than 20 uh, projects that have been uh, uh, the uh, that make up the whole of the central corridor so there will be road there'll be rail there'll be port development and uh, I, I think we're already seeing the beginnings of what's happening as far as uh, uh, the risks are c concerned th this is uh, what we have got to show the world that the perception uh, of uh, risk or the risks that people perceive are far less than the actual risk of course you've got to deal with uh, currency risk, regulatory risk, you've got to deal with construction risk, uh, you've got to deal with uh, what's generally called political uh, risk. But I think the continent is now ready to show that we can actually minimize uh, these uh, risks and make the projects that uh, we're talking about uh, acceptable to investors. Because when we're talking about 1.5 trillion of investment, that cannot all be generated from within Africa. It's got to be generated from support from the international community, and we will have investors from all over, over the world. The political will, I am absolutely sure, is being proven to exist. When you have uh, five leaders meeting regularly to discuss one project, and when you have today President Zuma lending his weight to the whole infrastructure uh, delivery uh, uh, project that we're engaged in, and when you have the African Union next week uh, going to be discussing these very big questions of infrastructure, you can see that the political will exists not just for the Central Corridor, but for the North-South uh, Corridor, for the Inga project, which is a major project to deliver hydroelectric uh, power into not just the DRC, but into the whole of uh, Africa. Uh, these are projects where it's clear to me that the leaders of Africa now know that the growth of Africa and employment in Africa and the quality of life in Africa uh, depends on, on these things. As far as the capital markets uh, are, are, are concerned, I mean, of course, in every uh, country there's a level of debt which is sustainable uh, and a level of debt beyond which uh, people are not going to lend uh, uh, to you. Uh, but that depends on the individual circumstances of the country. It depends on what its uh, general surpluses and deficits are. It depends on the growth of the economy. All these things have got to be taken into account. Dr. Mayaki, on the political risk, uh, since you have the overall mandate on all of the 51 projects, how, what, would you want to give any additional thoughts back well, to that question? Well, let, let me refer to the fact that I, I'm the interim CEO of the African peer review mechanism, which looks at uh, um, governance <coughs> on the continent. What we found, uh, what we find is that uh, the governance indicators have uh, been improved substantially and that uh, political risk has been uh, reduced in this continent. Uh, whether you take the Moe Ibrahim Index on Governance or you take the reports of the African Peer Review Mechanism, the strong trend is a strong improvement on governance issues. And uh, then uh, uh, governance issues are linked to political risk. Uh, more and more stability does exist. It is true that we have pockets of uh, insecurity and pockets of disturbance, but uh, these pockets are also being managed by the African Union in a very organized way, which was not the case uh, 15 years ago. So I think we shouldn't uh, 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 put too much emphasis on that issue, it is an important issue, but progress, significant progresses are being made in the domain. 
Great. I think we are out of time, but unless Patrick or Sim, did you want to add anything really quickly to answer the questions? I think what is important on the capital market and the euro bond, the sustainability of these debt payments by the countries, it's quite important that the, especially the economic infrastructure. The economic infrastructure have the ability to generate their own revenues, and hence they can be able actually to serve the debt associated with the funding of this infrastructure. It becomes quite important that then in the, in the structuring of these deals, the, 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 the hedging mechanism and the hedging strategies to try and manage the currency risk, especially if we were to raise uh, bonds in, in, in Europe, in, in euros, and we are coming actually to, to fund a, a project inside Zambia, and, Kwacha, and the fluctuations actually of the exchange rate between the Kwacha and, 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 and the hard currency has got to be well managed to make sure that the commercial viability of the project is well protected. But I think it's something that we are seeing more and more element of servity and innovation in the structuring of these deals. But th just a quick one on the, on the central corridor, because the central corridor talks about the, the, the linkages of those countries to the Dar es Salaam support via rail and road corridors linking the Eastern DRC, the, 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 the Burundi, linking Rwanda, and, and, and that goes through also the, the what we call the, the, the Lake Tanganyika, which is 700 kilometers long, on average 1.5 kilometers deep. If really, 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 and in those inland ports, you can imagine the linkages and the efficiencies and the effectiveness that actually to provide in terms of the economies of those countries to the rest of the world. It's mind boggling. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, we look forward to being here again in a year or two's time to continue to give you an update. If you wanted more information on either the early stage project financing report or the overall initiative, we have those available, maybe not in this room, but they're lying around, but please give me a card or one of my colleagues a card at the back and we can make sure you have a report. Thank you very much.